I was thinking yesterday about perfume. Uh, I think part of it was because I was talking to you guys about testers. Well, when I woke up today, I thought, oh, I really should have a signature scent. So I found this online and it, the link is in the description. It says how to make your own perfume blend with essential oils. And they tell you exactly how to do it. There is a link right here and they say to use a roll-on bottle. So let me find the roll-on bottle. See like this? I don't know if these things are refillable. I have one right here that could be, I don't know if it's refillable. I, it, it smells like total butt, but this, if I can remove the top, that would be really, really good. Anyway, anyway, I don't want to go too long on this. But they tell you exactly what you need. You just need essential oil, carrier oil, and then maybe like a 10 millimeter glass roll-on bottle. This is definitely, you know, much bigger than that. And if you want to know the proportions over here, they tell you exactly how to blend it. And then they have this uh, PDF over here. If you click on this PDF, so pretend I clicked on it. It shows you exactly what the blending factor is. And I was looking at this and one of my favorite scents is this thing called Lang Lang. I think it's called Lang Lang. Here. So I've, I've actually refrigerated this. This is the stuff that I use in uh, my face serums. I think it's a really, I think it's a really sexy scent. So it has a blending factor of four. And I'm debating if I should try and make my own uh, perfume blend. Definitely open to it. A lot of this stuff I already, well not a lot. Of, I have like bergamot over here. I have Lang Lang, I have, I think that's it actually. Oh, I don't want to smell like citronella actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to repel people. Um, but anyway, so this is this is a solution that you could uh, think about making a signature scent. And the importance of a signature scent is this. When I was thinking about ways to remember my mom, it dawned on me that my mom uses perfume. And I, I couldn't remember the name of it but it was in a champagne bottle thankfully google pointed me in the right direction so it's this perfume this is the perfume that my mom used royal bane de Caron. and i guess they did a reformulation of sorts people some people were saying that they they smelled it and it doesn't smell like how it used to i went online and i managed to find a vintage bottle from the 1990s I hope it smells exactly how I remember it to be. It's um, It was something like $17 shipped for about one ounce of this stuff. So the full bottle was about 30, I think $35. So it's it's quite affordable. This is a lot more affordable than buying something like Chanel. Chanel is, I think it's like $100 for 1.7 ounces. It's, it's crazy. So this hopefully it smells exactly how I remembered it to smell or something close to that and instead of buying a speedy for now because uh, getting a speedy would get rain damaged I'm thinking about um, sometimes or occasionally wearing this perfume to remember my mom it's uh, I don't know how the I don't know how it, the new one smells but going with the old one I'm hoping it smells okay if it smells like butt which I really hope it doesn't uh, we'll see we'll see um, yeah, because some people they were saying that they were saying that they did um, different reformulations. So I'm not, too, and then it might be battle botch specific. So overall, it allegedly smells like a grandmother's hope chest when opened. It might be certain, uh, but it lasts like remarkably long. The way I could describe this scent, if I can, if 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 I had to like put it into words, it smells unique. But it smells expensive. Yeah, it smells expensive and it, it does smell heavy. So whenever my mom wore this perfume, I distinctively tell like that was a perfume. It was just it was in a it's in a gorgeous bottle and it just has a very nice scent. And I it's weird because I, I think she bought it from Macy's, but I haven't maybe I never noticed it, but I never saw it in Sephora or something like that. Maybe it's too cheap because it's only like $35 for this whole bottle. But I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's very important to, if, I think it's very important to have like a scent because a scent can like evoke a lot of things, right? Um, if, if, for instance, you meet someone and then they smell you, they're like, oh, you know, they smell a certain way and a good scent, it's, it's a favorable thing. So when you, whenever they, when they see you, they, 
they think how would I say it? Like they have a they have a way to like remember you, and I think it's pretty. It's it can be very um, unforgettable, shall I say? So, I want to have a perfume because I want. I remember my mom when she wore this. Like I distinctively remember how the smell s- smelled like. I don't know if how it's gonna smell because it's a vintage bottle. I if it doesn't work out, I could always buy the newer bottle. But I was afraid that if I spent thirty five dollars on the new bottle and then I smelled it and I'm like, frick, it's the reformulation. And then I would want to buy the old bottle. It's a lot easier. I think I only found one vintage bottle uh, online. The rest that you can buy these like little testers. And I was looking at it. I was like, okay, so you want twenty one dollars for point three ounce for a tester, when I can buy the full bottle for about seven, uh, like one ounce for seventeen dollars ship. So I, I decided to just go with um, a used bottle. It's it has I think about one ounce left in it. So one ounce, seventeen dollars. I think it's worth it. So, uh, people have a different scents, and I think that I really hope that perfume and cologne make a comeback. I, I there are people that when they wear a scent, it's I don't how would I say like I don't know exactly what scent they have. Like I don't ask them what the scent is, but I remember thinking very I, I, I have like positive experiences about it because when you talk to a person you smell this great scent, it's like, ooh, you know, this is this is nice. This is nice to smell the scent. Don't go over don't go over with the scents. Uh, I I don't really I can't really give too much recommendations about women's perfume or men's cologne since it really depends on how it smells on the individual i have had i've smelled scents in the bottle they smell really nice and then i spray it on me and it smells like butt and then i ask people i'm like hey you know this smells like a really good scent to me how does it smell i mean like, eh, not that good so it's important to try these scents out and if it doesn't work with your your body chemistry or your pheromones or something like that like don't take it personally because not all scent, not everybody can wear a specific scent. And there have been certain scents, like I smell it and I think it smells really, really nice. And then I, I give a tester to someone and they spray it on themselves. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't smell that good. Or, oh, I think can do better. It, it's kind of, um, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's, it's kind of exhausting, but it, it might be a while to nail down a scent that smells good, but once you nail down that scent, just just flow with it. Just flow with it and just make that your scent. So hopefully this works for me. If not, I'm gonna try and make my own little concoction with my, my Lang Lang essential oils and some other scents and uh, just go down the rabbit hole on that. And I, uh, what else? I know some, I know some guys, they like, uh, Dolce and Gabbana. I think it was light blue. Uh, let's see. There was um. Oh, here's a heavy scent. Hold on, let me find this. It's uh. Let me find it. Yeah, you get to see my Christmas decorations when I need to put away. Hold on. It's called Chanel. So here is a scent that. I heard is a really, this is for men's if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's a men's scent. This one I remember hearing about and it's one of those scents that I think it's a nice scent, but it could be, it might not work for everybody. So check check out like the Chanel's if, if you can for the testers, go with that, you know, go with the Dolce's, go with, go with like the big brand names and then see how you like that. I know it's gonna be expensive, right? But just go with that. A good idea about a scent that is expensive that does work, and then you can go with the cheaper ones and then see if you can uh, fly with that. I kind of like going backwards for certain scents. Go with the expensive ones, see if there's see if there's something that you like, and then whatever the notes are. Because this one, for instance, has rosemary, lavender, neroli, uh, all this other stuff. That, like this stuff, sandalwood. A lot of men's cologne seems to have sandalwood or cedar. So if you can find something, like if this scent works for you, go with uh, something that has like similar notes and it, it is more inexpensive. But this one, let's read it. It 
So, da -da 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 -da, a French expression to describe a brilliant, eloquent man as such, plat platinum egotist, I don't know what it's called, is a fresh, aromatic, and distinctive modern scent for the extrovert who isn't afraid of making himself known. So, I know that some guys, they just spray themselves with axe and... Yeah, some some people like that. Uh, it's it's probably the same group of people who have that like car freshener, and it's just. Uh, I remember in Hawaii, like a lot of guys used to get this squash car freshener, and they're like, Eric, doesn't it smell so good? And I was like, Oh my goodness, I've smelled this scent so many freaking times. This, this it's like a car a car air freshener, but it's like a squash smell. To it. It's not like squash. It smells like generic car car freshener scent but a lot of people used to like that scent a lot of guys like that scent I didn't really care for it but yeah think about getting a cologne or perfume again it doesn't have to be expensive the one that my mom used was I think it's $36 a bottle and this of course is a, a lot more ex well yeah this is like $100 for 3.4 ounces I, I don't know why I feel like the men's one is cheaper than the woman's one yeah look 1.7 ounce for for $108 and this one's 3.4 ounce for $100 yeah so Does he wear aftershave? No, he doesn't wear any of that. Uh, you know what? What's important is not a brand name. I'm only I'm only recommending you guys the brand names because I kind of think it's like tried and true, and it has like a certain it has like a certain following to it. So you you don't have to go down like twenty different scents. You know, go with the big brand names and then see what you like and then go with like the cheaper ones. Because that way you know how an expensive one smells like and you can compare it to rather than going for the crap one and then you don't know how the really good one smells like. So uh, I it people can give recommendations. Like I can give a recommendation for this. I can give a recommendation for uh like Dolce Gabbana scent, or there's like Gucci Guilty, for instance. But yeah, I it's important. I think it's important. Like when a it oh also, do not wear a scent that clashes with your image. So if you're wearing a if you're wearing a scent like this, you're probably not good. How would I say? You probably want to dress better because then it'll add to it. You know, if you're wearing something like cargo pants and a really baggy shirt you wearing this scent it's it's gonna be kind of, i don't want to say laughable but it's gonna be like okay you smell really nice but you look like crap so if if you going remember it's like a whole package remember how women have like hair nails makeup sort of thing yeah men if you wear a cologne elevate your elevate your wardrobe a little you know, don't wear something like socks and sandals with this go out i know some guys wear socks and sandals but uh you will not be doing yourself a service by wearing a cologne like this and then we aren't doing the socks and sandals things or wearing flip-flops yeah i i had this thing like it's strange but i don't like seeing men's feet like you know when people when like guys show their toes and they're like walking around i'm like oh my goodness i'd rather not see the toes i'd rather see guys in in sneakers like covered toed sneakers or uh, or like dress shoes you know like i, I don't know it's, it's strange so uh, i think it looks more polished when a guy wears shoes versus letting his toes like hang loose <laughs> and i think it also because like when I see some of my guy friends, I look at their toes and they look they look pretty gnarly. I'm like ah, so uh, better to just like cover those things up. If not, uh, get a get a pedicure. If you have any corns, I, I know a few guys who have corns on their feet. I recommend I was like you need to get one of those corn removals because nobody wants to look at your toes and see like bumps and bumps and bumps. So. <sighs> No, he he wears socks and shoes. He doesn't like wearing slippers at all. But he walks around the house wearing socks. Like I I rarely rarely see his bare feet.
So look into that, you guys. Um, you can also go on. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you down this. I'm gonna take you down the rabbit hole of Sephora. Oh look, J Lo has a beauty product on there. I feel like a lot of celebrities. Rihanna has it. J Lo has it. Uh, let's see. So this stuff. Where is this expensive stuff? Oh, this is expensive cream. So this one is expensive. This one is expensive. Okay, so look at this face cream, you guys. One ounce for one hundred ninety dollars. Isn't that crazy? Look at the zero point five ounces, ninety five dollars. <laughs> they say it works wonders, but for me, I'm like, frick, not. You know how quickly I could go through half ounce of face cream? I could go through that really quickly. I feel like so. Anyway, anyway. Uh, oh my goodness, stop showing me this honey stuff. Uh, so let's find here. Skin, makeup, fragrance, fragrance. Here we go. And then let's look at... Uh, I don't think men's have this, but for women, for any women who are watching this, I got a really good tip from my friend. My friend told me, she said, Erica, you know, instead of buying these big bottles of perfume, buy a rollerball. And I said, what do you mean buy a rollerball? And they told me that instead of having to pay like $100 for a... Uh, like a, a sizable container of it. If you buy the rollerball, you can. It's it's cheaper, and then it's portable, so you can keep it inside of your purse. And I thought that was really smart. I don't know how long it would take me to go through perfume. So if you're like me and you don't really spray too much, or you only use it for special occasions, go with the rollerball because you'd be saving money. Again, I know that they say perfume's supposed to last like three to five years before it changes scent. I'm kind of fickle with scents, I find, so I don't, I don't think that if I buy a hundred dollar perfume, it's gonna be my signature scent. Because as time goes on, I might find another scent. I might want to play around with that. So rollerballs, I think, is a really good thing. Um, men, men don't really have rollerballs. Men have it's a pretty straightforward. You guys got cologne. Oh, this is actually smells pretty good. Yeah, I've, I've smelled this. I've smelled this one. This is actually smells good. But again, what I smell and what I think smells good might not work for you personally. So try try as many colognes as you can. Go to Sephora. Try, try as many as you can. Spray it on yourself. Oh, wait. My bad. You can't spray it on yourself because of the freaking situation. Oh, so sorry, you guys. I'm giving you, I'm giving you tips and I, I forgot that you can't spray this stuff on you. But, um... I don't know how you would get a sample of this. Maybe you could, maybe, you know what, maybe instead of going to Sephora, maybe you can check out something like Bloomingdale's or Macy's or Saks Fifth and see if their policy is a little different. I haven't gone shopping at one of those major department stores in about a year or more. <laughs> I, I don't really go, I don't go to Macy's, I don't go to, I've never stepped foot in a Macy's, I think. Here in New York, I've, I've walked past it. I've never gone to Sephora here in New York or a lot of these like beauty places in New York. Um, I prefer to buy my stuff online. And again, I'm not a big uh, perfume person and Louis doesn't wear any cologne, although I do, he does have some cologne, he, but he just doesn't wear it. Let's see here. So yeah, some people really like this one. But just try all this. Oh, here we go. See, like this one has like a little travel spray. And you can see how that works. Oh, here's Gucci Guilty. And yeah, this is a... Uh, I, I don't really remember which one I liked more. But yeah, this one... Oh, this one smells good too. Dolce & Gabbana, the one. Here's a, here's a little confession. Sometimes I'll just go to the go to the Sephora store and then smell the men's cologne. I'm like, oh, this smells so nice. <laughs> but of course I have no... I have no desire to buy like a whole thing of men's cologne. It just look how nice this bottle is. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Oh, that looks so gorgeous. Men's cologne is really nice. Um, to just just smell it and. But if I bought it for Lou, like he would not wear it most likely, and uh, yeah, it would just kind of be like a waste of a hundred thirty-four dollars or maybe even a hundred ninety-five dollars, just kind of sitting there on the shelf. So look into that. There's so this is expensive stuff, but let's go. Oh, it's also the best selling. But let's go to a low to high and see what their low is. 
Okay, so they got this. Oh god. <laughs> it's only online only. Okay, so... Man, all is it just me or it seems like... Okay, no, no. See, they got the Versace ones over here. Also, it's very important to think about the staying power of some of this stuff. Because some perfumes, I've smelled them for women. I feel like I spray it on myself and then 20 minutes later I can't smell it anymore. Or I ask people to mind, they're like, Yeah, I can kind of smell it, Erica, but not really. I'm like, oh, waste of money. That's why I get testers. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah, I remember guys used to wear this, like, all the time, this Aqua Di Gio. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, this is taking me back. There was... I'm trying to think, like, there was one cologne that my friend said her, her dad wore, and her dad was a businessman. But I can't remember specifically what cologne it was. But she really liked it because she says it made him smell really refined. Is it Dior? Like if I saw it, it would it would juggle my mind. But maybe maybe not. Oh look at this! Hermes makes a scent too. Look at that. I remember I smelled it. I think it was this one. I was kind of like eh. So all the big name brands make their own scents. See, so you can see, you remember the pen manufacturer, this one? They have their own scent. And I think it was Ralph Lauren, but I could be wrong. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know which scent he 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 wore. I thought maybe if I saw the title it would juggle. But no. Juggle. What is a good cologne? Uh, I like... Okay, here's the thing. I can tell you scents that I like, but it really depends on your own body pheromone chemistry thing. Because there are scents that I like in the bottle, and then I spray it on myself, and it does. It smells terrible. So what I would recommend this is I would say go with like the popular ones. If you go to here and you go to best-selling, you can see like this one is really popular. Wait, I'm, I'm only in Dior. Yeah, this scent actually smells really nice. I liked it. Uh, so this one, see, go with like the tried and true men's one. This was a good scent. This, yeah, so I like this one. I was telling people that I kind of like this scent, but it depends. Not every guy can wear this scent. So sometimes you'll have scents that smell like too heavy or too, you know, too sandalwood long guy and then you have it on another guy and it smells a little better but if you go with kind of like the best selling ones and see what everybody else is buying I kind of feel like that's a pretty safe bet of course you don't have to buy it from Sephora you can go with the cheaper um, oh here we go look there's a fragrance finder let's do this come on so you guys can go to sephora.com look at uh, let's see gift for him what do I like for men um I don't like. How, I I don't want to say coffee shop because when I think warm coffee shop, I think of I I think of Starbucks, and I don't want a guy to smell like Starbucks, a lush mossy source. What comes to mind when you picture a a, a good smelling guy? Clean, crisp, expensive, luxurious, that kind of thing, refined. So so if a guy is wearing something like a V neck and his. Even if he's wearing like a v-neck and jeans, he looks elevated or his the, the image evokes elevation because he smells expensive. Not not like not cookie cutter, not not like I don't know. Not sure. What kind of god would he want? He would want what would he want? He wouldn't want anything. He wants cologne. Oh what? So they just they just recommended me the best sellers. Okay, let's go let's go back over here. So I'm looking for a gift for him. They gave me the best sellers. That's funny. Uh, I would say... I don't know. When I think lush mo mossy forest, I think rainwater. I just smell like rainwater. Like, if I had to think about, like, the perfect scent for a guy, I would not want a guy to smell like rainwater or Starbucks coffee or... 
or like one of those generic coastal scents. <sighs> yeah, just just you know what, just something like this, this Dior s s Sauvage or something like that. That this is this is a scent that I smelled uh, pretty recently, and I, I liked it. I gotta ask, you know what? I haven't smelled the Axe body spray in a, in a while. Um, so I think that sometimes if you, I, I think that, how would I say this? I think it's important, like if, if you work with Axe body spray, like that's great, you know, run with it. But if you wanna, if you can get like a more refined scent and you can, uh, if it if it's not too out of budget, I would say go with the more refined scent. However, keep in mind that if you wear the refined scent, if you're wearing something that's seventy five seventy seven dollars, seventy seven dollars a for two ounces, right? So that's thirty dollar an ounce. If you're wearing something like this, and this bottle's gonna last you a really long time, you're not you know don't don't spray yourself like if it's like ninety nine cents only, right? Like spray ooh bergamot. This is yeah no wonder why I like it. I like bergamot and I like amberwood. Not too much, but I do like those scents. So anyway, if you wear a scent like this, be aware that if you're spending this kind of money on the scents, you gotta look good. You, you gotta put more effort into what you're wearing because if you're wearing something like baggy jeans with an ill-fitting shirt, this scent, you're doing a disservice to the scent. You're doing a disservice to yourself because you're, you spent money to spray yourself with an expensive scent and you look like crap. So I can't tell you too much about Axe Body Spray. I haven't smelled that in a really long time. But I do notice that sometimes when guys uh, put these like generic body sprays, I don't know if it was really Axe or not. It, it just smells generic. You know, it's like, okay, you smell like any other male spray. There's nothing, there's nothing different about it. Yeah, so try, you know, go, I like I said, I, Sephora doesn't give, I don't think Sephora, I don't know if Sephora would be giving samples of male cologne out because it would be, they, I think their policy is they will only give things out that's prepackaged by the manufacturer. So instead of spraying things into a little vial for you, you have to, they have to get something from, let's say, Dior directly. And then Dior, you know, the packaging that you see in these tester tubes, it has like the paper on there, it has like the little slot, that thing. Yeah, so you might have better uh, going over to somewhere like Bloomingdale's or or um, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Macy's instead, instead, and then getting samples there. Don't don't feel don't feel self conscious if you go to check out the perfume or the cologne section because it's normal. It's completely normal to go through all these smells definitely get a tester if you can because as i mentioned earlier if you have a scent and you like it and you spray it on yourself and then you find out it smells like butt yeah it's better that you get the tester than spend money on this stuff like i can't imagine someone spending 77 dollars on a scent and then they they take it home they spray it on themselves it smells like butt it smells good in the bottle but when they spray it on themselves it smells like crap and yeah, and then there's just like $77 out the window. It's important to not just smell yourself, but if you can, get someone else's opinion too. But if you like the scent on yourself, yeah, and you can't get any other person's opinion, then just go with that. Oh, wow. Big full bottle. Jeez. So WKG Math Guy likes high intensity from Mary Kay. I've never tried uh, Mary's. Uh, I've, I've never smelled it, so I can't say. But if anybody has a Mary Kay consultant or knows someone who sells Mary Kay, then, you know, check it out. Where do I get my scent? I always go to Sephora. Um, I like going to Sephora. 
and I just got samples there. I never bought my own signature scent because it was never a scent that I really smelled and I was like, yeah, this wants to be my forever scent kind of thing. Uh, some people, they buy the bottles. I've shared with you guys earlier that instead of buying like the big perfume bottles, see like these things can be like $82, $62. I would go with the, where is it? I would go with the rollerball because the rollerball is a cheaper price. If you feel like you might not use the scent very much or you don't really wear perfume, then go, save the money and go to the rollerball because I know if I went with a lot of these scents, because it wouldn't be a signature scent, I would use maybe like 20 sprays and then I'd be like, yeah, if I forget about it for a couple of years and it's a complete waste of money. But the scent that I like is... Oh, I can't remember, but I remember I, I got a sample of this one and I liked it. This was nice. I just bought um, a used bottle of this one, a vintage bottle, because this was a scent that my mom wore before. So I, I have to, I want to see how that smells. It might smell like butt, but hey, you don't know unless you try it. And a lot of these scents, yeah, a lot of these scents, like I've, I've smelled this one, I was like, eh. I don't know, maybe I'm really picky about my own personal scent. I don't like something that's too too flowery. Um, when I talk about flowery, like it smells very generic. I don't like something that's too light either. I don't like something that smells like predominantly like grapefruit. I like like a more, I like a kind of like elegant scent, but not too overbearing. And I remember this scent was smelled really nice but I don't know how it smells on me. Like it smelled great on my mom, but maybe on me it's gonna smell like 50 year old woman. <laughs> when my mom wore this scent, it was it was really gorgeous. It was a really nice scent, but again, you know, her, her body chemistry and how this scent works with her natural scent could be a lot different than me. So I could wear it and most could be like, oh my goodness, what was that, Eric? <laughs> it smells terrible. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Oh my goodness, they still make this scent. Yeah, look at this. Doesn't this remind you of Snow White? So the women's, the women's perfume section is 691 products. The men's perfume is, the men's cologne, my bad, is 245. So if you are a guy, you have about one third of the fraction of the, the female side. Actually like half. Lucky you guys. You don't have to go through 691 products. So this this is where all you know the men are buying stuff and they're like, oh I gotta try this perfume. And it's crazy because I haven't been in Sephora for about I think a year. Yeah, about a year. And it's like I see all this stuff. I'm like, when was this? I never remember seeing this or this or this or this. Like Juliet have never seen that before. Um, I think I've seen this one. But yeah, definitely didn't see this. It's just yeah, there's just so much sense. And I don't like it if I get a scent and then they discontinue it. Um, that's just me though. Uh, I shared with you guys like I re one of my favorite scents that I bought. I actually bought the whole bottle. Was this thing called? Uh, it was like Salvatore Ferragamo Encanto Drink. I really like that scent. And then they don't sell it anymore. I don't think they maybe they do sell it. Let me see. That's an old scent. But it doesn't smell the, the same too. Let's see. Encanto Dream. Oh, they do sell it still. I guess they do. Do they? They sell it at Walmart. Are these old bottles? I don't know. Cre yeah, see, look, you can tell this is old. Created in 2005. Yeah, look at that. Pineapple. Yeah, I think my Hawaii, my Hawaii girl is showing pineapple. <laughs> That's pineapple, blackcurrant, exotic mango, and juicy pink light. This was a really nice scent, but I haven't worn it in a really long time. I feel like it's a little too, too bright for me. But yeah, this was, this was the first bottle of perfume that I bought, and I was so happy about it. I was like, oh, I really liked it. I don't know if I still have it. I might have given it away. I might have sold it online because there was a time like I smelled it and I was like, oh, I don't like it anymore. 
It's one of those, it's one of those, you like it for a little bit and then afterwards you don't really like it as much. See, they have some pretty cool bottles over here. Ah. Wow, look at that. Isn't that a nice bottle? That's a really nice bottle. So hopefully, hope highly doubt it, but hopefully I can find, I can find a tester of some of these bottles lying around. I highly doubt it. I'll ever find these kind of bottles. Uh, first of all, you know, the employees will probably take it. Second of all, uh, I do know like some stores, if you go, if you go diving and these are stores that I would not hit up because they're kind of far away and I wouldn't make a trip just to check out a store. But there are like certain places like Ulta that some people go diving at, but Ulta employees really damage all the stuff. Um, so they, the employees really go out of their way to make sure like divers don't, can't really salvage much. So sometimes it's like the luck of the draw from what I was reading online. Employees might do a half ass job and then people will salvage it, but... Yeah, I'm not I'm not looking forward to dealing with wiping down really messy dumped out perfume and uh, damaged stuff at a Ulta. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to look through all 691 products, but I did want to show you guys this, and this is something that you guys can think about. It's something that I'm making the move towards um, doing, and I feel like while I'm working on my face serums and other stuff, I can try and get down a signature scent, and uh, maybe I hope to get a scent that I feel like I can carry with me throughout the years, like a one certain scent. Um, and when I talk about one certain scent, it's like a set on out of stock. It's something that can be maybe hope for a really long time. And if it works for me, you know, that's great because I want to have a scent that people can remember me by, but not, not like a terrible scent, but a, a something that's kind of elegant, elevated, not too heavy, not too overbearing, but it leaves like a good impression and when I smell the scent I'm like ooh you know I smell I smell good <laughs> I smell good some um hopefully it, it it makes me think like hey Erica you smell good you look good you should dress good and then I make a step forward to being the person that I want to look like um I think image is really important especially in this kind of day and age but don't put you know don't put too much hyper focus on that it's very important though to to um to kind of always want to focus to be on like the best version of yourself work on character work on your outside work on clothing as well and for any people who you know try on clothes and it doesn't fit well and you guys maybe think like oh you know i'm too i'm too skinny or i'm too um i'm too fat for this or i'm too short for this there's a beautiful thing called tailoring and there's a reason why a lot of these celebrities like their clothes looks freaking perfect because if they have clothes that doesn't fit them well then they'll just go off to try another you know another top or another brand or they'll get it tailored so it, it looks good and then they feel good and yeah so it's very important to get clothes that fits you well and don't feel bad if the clothes doesn't fit you well because a lot of this stuff is not tailor-made just for you right it's it's mass produced and they want to sell millions of a top and not everybody has the same body proportions so uh yeah that's all i wanted to say about that and i hope that everybody focuses on really becoming their best self and yeah just think about the whole package right hair yeah i know guys don't really deal with the nail bit but just like always push yourself to be better because i think that as everybody gets older there's really there's really this dangerous part where Sometimes if people if people start seeing like weight gain creep up or wrinkles creep up, then they think like, oh crap, you know, it's, it's like, it's going downhill. But I don't think life has to be like that. I think that people can always just 
I, I think that a person who is getting older doesn't have to go on the decline fight and then they can look really good. I've seen some people who are like 50 years old, 60 years old, and they have really great bodies and they have really good skin because they take care of themselves. You know, they stay on a diet, they don't eat the fast food, they don't drink the soda. And then as a result of that, they have better bodies than 20 year olds. Um, you see people like who have muscles and they just, they, exude confidence because you can tell that instead of just letting themselves go because of their age they said you know what i'm gonna buckle down and i'm gonna invest in like a skincare regimen or uh, invest in uh, in exercise exercise is incredibly important i'm not a big fan of exercising i've been very very open about that it's like when i exercise i feel like a little gudetama if you're familiar with that it's like a little lazy egg and I, I don't really like exercising. I can't exercise by myself at all. That's what I realized. I'm terrible at exercising by myself since I just don't, I don't feel the confidence about lifting weights by myself. And then when I, when if I do reps by myself, I'm just like, oh, I feel kind of like a hamster. So I work out with Lewis and that works out really well. He counts my reps for me. He, he records things for me. And if I wasn't working out with him, to be honest, like, I don't really think I'd be working out. And it's not because, it's just because, like, when I work out by myself, I, I just kind of worry about, like, not doing it right. I don't know any direction. I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know when I should add in more weight. I don't know how much weight I can handle. And it's part of it is just, you know, feeling kind of self-conscious about doing stuff by myself so, uh, there's been times also like i i lift weights and then i'm just like out of breath and he has to actually spot me so if i was lifting weights by myself and i ran out of breath it would and and the weight fell on me like that would not be a good thing so if it was yeah so i'm really happy and really um fortunate that i can work out with him and i usually work out about two three times a week um not when i'm on my you know monthly gift kind of thing because i just feel like crap but uh get a gym partner you know get a gym partner if you have the fortitude by yourself i i don't have the fortitude really to do a lot of this stuff by myself uh, but um so working out or working in um, working out with another person would um, really benefit me and that's that's what i found out for sure Yeah. Oh, thank you, Anonymous. Um, yeah, so whatever whatever scent... Oh, my goodness, my bones are cracking. <laughs> whatever scent that I make, um, serums that I make, I want to do like a test run of it, give it like one, two, three months, see how I react to it. Um, I'll share it with you guys openly. Um, I'm not planning to make a business out of it. And I know some people, and I've shared this yesterday in my stream, some people, the they create these things, right? They'll have these recipes or formulations and they have zero intention of selling it, but they like to hoard knowledge to themselves. They like to hoard, they like to hoard things because it makes them feel like they found something special. Now, the dangerous thing about that, or I think the sad thing about that is, is that if you don't plan to sell this stuff and if you, if, if you don't plan to sell this stuff and it's, it's not like, you will ever bring this thing to market. I don't understand why you would be hoarding that knowledge because although it seems like you would be superior to another person for saying, oh, you know, I have this wonderful serum concoction and it works wonders for my skin, but I'm not gonna tell you. I think it just kind of makes someone look like a, a, a jackass. And I think that it doesn't help society as a whole because if I had to put myself back in, um, if I had to like, think about how I was when I was younger right there were times it's like I didn't have any sense of direction about certain things and even like for recipes right like I would ask people like oh hey you know I really like your recipe um that or the food that you you made can I have the recipe and they would say oh no sorry I can't give it to you it's a family recipe I'm like oh okay so I never knew what the recipe is and if if that if that family recipe got lost like it's kaput you know it's it's gone forever sort of thing and it's such a shame it really is such a shame so with with what i'm doing i don't mind sharing it at all because i think it's very important to help people out 
you know, spread spread the gift of having healthy skin. And it might not be a perfect recipe. It might not work for everybody, but at least people might be, you know, kind of nudged to try it out and take care of their skin. I don't, I don't get anything out of doing the whole, oh yeah, uh, you know, this is, this is the, the secret regimen that I'm doing, but I'm not going to tell you guys because yeah, you guys can all look like raisins. You know, it's like, I think that's the, I think that's the, I think that's not good. So I really believe in having transparency. And I'm not going to say looking like this forever, right? Eventually I'm going to start aging. But if I had to think about, hey, maybe I can help someone else, you know, feel better about themselves. Maybe I can slow down the aging process. Maybe if someone has fine lines and they try on a serum or it, it inspires them to try and make more serums like that would be a really great thing people should really feel better about themselves inside and out and i'm a big supporter of that um i i want to i want to uplift society i want to make the world a better place and i think that i don't have to just kind of just focus on myself and then just say like oh yeah i do all this research and yeah if you don't do this research like yeah you don't you don't get any knowledge that i have yes so um i so i i don't want to be like the people that i have seen in my life where i ask them for things or you know i see them going down a really good path or you know they're doing a skin skincare regimen and then i ask them and then they don't want to tell me this kind of stuff or it's like i'm like oh you know what does um you know what what do you you know you ask someone who knows someone and then they're they're just kind of like yeah, there's like there's like something that might be kind of omitted from their regimen because they don't want people to know how, how to look exactly as good as them. But everybody is going to age, you know, everybody is going to age and I don't see anything bad about um I don't see anything bad about sharing this stuff. Now, I do know some people um, we'll say things like, oh, Erica, you know, you use, you know, you use like beef tallow on your face. I'm like, yeah, you know, I use beef tallow on my face, I use serums on my face, and it's been working for me. The only downside is my face looks a little greasy because I kind of over apply. Yeah, you're not supposed to use too much beef tallow. Um, I found that out recently, but I, I tend to kind of like use too much. And then uh, Lewis tells me like, I look like a lizard sometimes. So you can always wipe that off. You, know, you can always wipe it off, wipe off the excess and then uh, reapply less quantity. I'm like, hey, it's ready on my face. I'm staying inside. I don't care. I don't care. So um, 2021 my goal for myself and not just 2021 I'm moving forward for myself and I hope everybody is the same way I think that people should take care of themselves they should make themselves more of a priority because if you do not make yourself a priority if you do not focus on yourself nobody else is going to focus on you and that's how people go down this slippery slope of they're so giving to other people and you you I know you guys have seen this this type it happens especially with women because women have such big hearts you see women where they have kids and then they the kids look great you know they take so good care of the kids or the the spouse and but the woman herself like she doesn't pamper herself she doesn't take care of herself so she starts looking haggard and and then you know she she takes care of everybody else but because she doesn't take care of herself she just goes down the slippery slope and then she has like low self confidence and mind you this is I've seen women like they're really amazing women, really big hearts, but they don't because they don't prioritize themselves. They they end up they end up, you know, kind of suffering. And I'm sure it's not good for their self-esteem issues, self-esteem either. And I don't want to be like that. I, I don't want to be like that. I do know that historically I kind of tend to be the people, the, the kind of person where I will hyper focus on the cats, you know, I will hyper focus on Lewis sometimes. And for myself, I noticed like I was putting myself kind of on the back burner. And that's not good because I need to prioritize myself since this is, I only have one life. And if I, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I spend so much time and so much energy on other things and then I just 
to prioritize myself. Everybody needs to prioritize themselves. I think that everybody needs to have a balance as well. So that's why I push for taking care of yourself, you know, watching what you eat. That's what I'm doing. It's not perfect, but I'm definitely better. I'm definitely getting better. And sometimes I get off track and I go back on track. But watch what you eat, you know, watch what you're, watch how your clothes fit, you know, watch how, watch your grooming stuff, your skincare, um, be cognizant about hair. Uh, know that you can always do better and there's no downside to that there really is and I think that when people feel more if they feel like they're working on themselves more actively I kind of feel like it might push people to also um, inspire other people to help themselves so for instance I know people who've lost a, a number of a lot of weight and they they take care of themselves you know they start instead of eating all this junk food they start eating healthier the weight comes off people notice and then it turns into wow how did you lose all that weight and then they share the regimen and because they're so grounded they inspire other people as well so even though their intention was all you know they were only focusing on themselves when they're on that path because other people got to see it too it made them think okay you know take you know, they should also do small little steps as well. And that's what that's what my hope about all this thing is. I want to go and improve myself, but as I find these little things or as I think about these little things, I want to share with all, all of you because I think that we can all do small little things to, um, to improve ourselves. And then uh, maybe, hopefully maybe, as time goes on, people feel more confident about themselves and then they also push other people to take care of themselves as well because I know, I know what it's like if I don't take care of myself and putting on serum on my face is and putting on beef tallow and serum on my on my face as as small as it may seem it really made a big difference on my life because every day when I wake up, I reapply and then throughout the day I reapply. Like I wake up, I put on the towel on my face, I put on the serum. Throughout the day, I'll put more serum on my face just because I'm like, oh, my skin looks a little dry or my skin looks like a little parched. Maybe I'll add it more. I think I'm over moisturizing in a sense, but yeah. So I'll put on like a little bit of serum, maybe like three times a day, three times a day. So morning, afternoon and night. And I just like, it really sets a thing up for me because I have to focus on myself, right? I wake up, brush my teeth, take care of myself, take care of my face. And that really sets the tone of the day. It's Erica, you wake up, you take care of yourself, you go and do what you need to do, but always remember, take care of yourself. So that is why taking, you know, doing this whole beef towel face serum thing changed my life. And after I started going through that, I thought, okay, well, what else can I do? I'm already doing the skincare and I'm already exercising. Let me work a little bit more on my nutrition. Let me work a little bit more on this or that and makeup and yeah. So it's, it's like gradually building, but psychologically, one of the best things you can do is just start skincare regimen really it is because spending that time patting in moisturizer patting in essence and it's just amazing and also um i don't know if lewis wants to share wants me to share this but i'll share it with you anyway um so i got um i got some facial wash and lewis has been using it and it is incredible how much difference it is using a facial wash rather than like regular body soap on his faces so He's been using it and he's been using like some kind of moisturizer on his face too, like a facial moisturizer. And when I see his face, I'm like, dang, his face looks well hydrated. It doesn't look dry. It doesn't look parchy. Um, if you don't, if, and I can, I can tell like when I can tell like he, you know, he can notice the difference as well. Um, and he likes it. He really likes it. And it's just like a small little step, right? Instead of using regular face, regular body soap or regular soap for his face, he started using a facial wash. And and then after he uses the facial wash, then he starts using on like a little facial moisturizer. Yeah. And he also uses eye cream now too. So <laughs> yeah, but there's nothing, there's nothing embarrassing about it. You know, he's taking care of himself. He's, um, 
he's taking care of himself and I, I hope that his, his eye bags reduce over time. I also told him not to rub his eyes because he has this really bad habit of like rubbing his eyes like really like Oberon Martell kind of thing, you know, the mountain and Oberon Martell. And that's why sometimes you see him, he looks like he has like really bad bruising on his eyes. It's just because when he's tired or when his eyes get dry, he, he really rubs his eyes and that causes bruising around his eye area. Yeah, so um, the, the facial products that um, he uses isn't expensive at all. Um, he's, we've been using uh, Nature Republic, that stuff. Um, so that is a uh, Korean skincare and they have, it, it's affordable. And I really, I, I think um, Nature Republic or Face Shop is really good. Actually, I like Face Shop more, but Nature Republic, it's, you can buy something that's like six dollars and fifty cents for a facial wash and then that stuff is pretty well priced so uh look into that you know look into going into like a i like korean skincare look into getting something from us korean skincare company there's like face shop nature republic totally tony moly but yeah and then see and then there's another one like oh i forgot the name of it i keep forgetting what the name is but yeah try that um small little steps switch out your switch out your um bar soap or your body soap for facial wash and and then uh see how you like it cream beauty products in my opinion it's less harsh on the face than american beauty products this is just this is this is just my thought oh this is just my thought oh look at that so this is just my thought about that and i really like Korean beauty products a lot so um, if you want to go down a skincare path I would say try Korean products doesn't have to be expensive stuff um, Clinique is also good but yeah I don't know I tried the Clinique regimen they have like a three regimen I didn't mm. it was okay like some people I some of my friends absolutely swear by that but for me I was like yeah I'm gonna go with Korean beauty products instead so yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm going to get going. I got to eat breakfast and I need to drink more water. You guys take care and I will talk to you either later today or tomorrow. See ya.